Mac college football. Now, this is, you know, Ohio, Toledo, Akron, you know, da da da, Bowling Green, whatever. They Toledo are. Toledo is Ohio, by the way. Yeah, I'm that talking about I'm talking about Ohio, like Ohio. Oh, you're talking University. about universities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought you were going through like states that the Mac is in. No, no, no. Bowling Green, Toledo. As much as, as much as Ohio probably doesn't want to claim Toledo, they're in Toledo. They're, they are in. Yeah, they are they're in Ohio. In Ohio. Um, they are going through cost cutting measures right now. Now, obviously, yesterday it was announced that Akron is cutting uh, three different sports. I want to say a track team and like a volleyball team, something like that. Uh, they're going through, they're cutting teams. Uh, Bowling Green today announced that they are immediately uh, cutting men's baseball. So they are cutting some of the the smaller sports that are kind of drains on their finances, right? So yeah. one of the things that was brought up, Dr. David Ridpath, who we've had on the show multiple times, uh, he brought up yesterday, like, why don't they go through and cut some of the fat off elsewhere. You don't need 10 football assistants. You don't need, like, just because the NCAA says you can have them doesn't mean that you have to have that many. You can cut fat other places. Like, How many assistant ADs do Wetzel and Forty and Pete Thamel talk about? Oh, my God. Like, that literally their only job is following around the defensive coordinator and helping him with any recruiting stuff that he needs or whatever. Like, yeah. there's like 20 of those guys sitting around an office doing now, a lot of A lot of these are Power 5 schools, right? Yes. yes. But at a school like this, like Akron, like Bowling Green, whatever, uh, you – there's not a ton of those, right? The Hang support on. staff. But here's is the not, thing: there's not a ton of them, but there are some of them, yes. and it's okay to shoot all those guys in the head. I, yeah, I mean, really, let's just tear every one of those contracts up. Bang, yeah, gone. I, the, you, all you guys hit the bricks. I think, I think universally, people would rather that happen as opposed to you not have uh, losing sports. a sport. Yeah, for for these kids to be able to play. Like, and I understand that it, not all of them are necessarily scholarship opportunities. Doesn't uh, matter. But even still, you want the kids to have opportunities as many places as they can to go play a collegiate sport. Like, that's what Those you want. Those other people are there strictly to make someone else's job easier, not yes. necessarily to do someone else's job. That means that other person just has to do their damn job. Yes. So one And of their th- job might have gotten a little more difficult because they're used to farming it out to some scrub, Okay. We're getting rid of all those scrubs, and now you just have to do it. You're highly compensated as coordinators and assistant coaches. You have to do these piddly, meaningless jobs. Yeah. So, along with that, there are other places that you can cut fat. And the Mid-American Conference, I believe, will be the first of many to begin this practice. This is the easiest thing in the world to do. Yeah, they are ending the practice of home teams staying in hotels the night before football games, according to league sources. Uh, it says the MAC will also reduce the size of travel rosters as the league continues to cut costs with its 12 universities facing financial hardship in the wake of the coronavirus pandemic. Now, we'll, we'll get to the rest of this article momentarily. Um, it, it says, with each MAC school facing millions in losses and likely enrollment declines for the next school year, uh, football teams will stay in hotels only on the road and fewer players will now go to conference road games. Uh, and they're they're trimming the road team, or the road um uh, player Roster. limit from yeah. 76 players to 70. Um, which is fine. Which is, yeah, I mean, it, yeah, even, it, n- even non, that, non-noticeable at yeah, all. Even even that, I mean, my God, it, NFL teams are 53 players. I mean, it, you yeah, know, you don't have to have that many, but, and it does suck for the players that don't make the travel roster. Okay, but, but you could sit at home, that's fine, that's yeah, part of it. Even still. Now, I went back, I was, I was trying to find where anybody else had written about this. The Star-Telegram down in Texas... Uh, they wrote an article back in 2014 discussing this because I was I was curious. I had seen numbers thrown around all over the place, and I, I saw a couple others like Alabama spends over sixty thousand dollars every Friday night before home game to have their guys stay at a hotel in town, and it's you know typically a top of the line hotel. Yep. Um, but it says like on this article, uh, the accommodations before the Longhorns home opener were fit for a high rolling Texas X. A custom buffet for $79. Uh, if the all-you-can-eat spread wasn't enough, there's a $20 snack later that night. Around midnight, when the hunger pangs strike again, the hotel came through with a $24 late snack. The next morning, for $36, the eggs came every which way, and that was followed by a pregame lunch for $29. That is all per person. 
These were not fans at the Omni Austin Hotel at South Park the night before the Texas uh, Longhorns opened their season against North Texas. It was the 120 or so Texas football players. The total bill for a stay a little more than five and a half miles from Daryl K. Royal Texas Memorial Stadium, over $39,000. Now, that was in 2014. The numbers that I have seen most recently due to expanded football staffs, et cetera, and the rising price of hotel accommodations, big-time Power 5 schools pay over $60,000 per Friday night. Now, for every for, for Saturday night, oh, yeah, Friday night, Friday Saturday night. morning, for every home game, and this is not a situation where you play six home games, six road games, okay? No, this is— teams are playing more and more games at home. Yeah, now, if you've got a neutral site, that's one thing. Uh, but typically, yeah. typically the big-time schools are playing at least seven home games. Right. So if you do the math on that, 60,000 times seven, 420,000. Now, a school like Alabama, Texas, et cetera, they have it, right? Now, a school like Akron, we're going to cut that number. We're going to cut it in half. We're yeah. going to say it's $30,000, and they've got six home games a year. Now, it may be a little less than 30000 but we're just going with that. 30,000 times six is 180,000. You just cut three employees. Yeah. But like you, you saved three employees' jobs by doing that. $180,000 right there, along with some of the other measures that they're going through. Um, that is, I mean, that, that saves a sport in well, a lot yeah. of these cases. Like one of these non revenue sports, like their cost. One of the reasons they're they're non revenue and it doesn't hurt things is because they just don't cost a lot to operate. Right now they I mean, they may operate the in the red and save like gymnastics or baseball. Like you can do those things. Yeah, Michael said that's a great way to deal with. Uh, at least the kids still get their education. If you're bummed out about not making the travel roster, get better. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, you don't you're not hurt by any of it. And, and the other thing that you got to cut out, and this needs to be cut out across the board too, is injured players traveling as well. Because it's something that didn't used to happen, but now, like, we want that leadership in the locker room. So, Bill on his crutches is still going to be right there with the clipboard. Like, no, no. Bill, on it, we have a coach that can that can hold the clipboard and, and rah-rah. Yeah, the and do the his coach job. needs to do the rah Ryan. Yeah. You yeah. you stay home. We're not going to pay the all those numbers you added up roughly break down to a couple hundred dollars per person. We're, we're not paying that for you to be broken on the sidelines. Yes. And, I mean, it, it, it goes with major schools as well. Like, Alabama could afford to no, take two of last year. But there's no reason but, to have those expenses. Right now, they spend it because we've talked about this before. You bring this up all the time. They're nonprofits. They have the money, and they can't keep it. Yeah. They can't roll it over as a profit center for the next year. So, they have to spend it. So, there's nothing stopping them. But it's still a gross misappropriation of funds. It's also dirty, dirty dealings because – you got this, this backhanded circle jerk going on with the people who run the hotel. Who who do you think one of the biggest donors are? Well, the people that get sixty thousand dollars, you know, three times a month for three months from the team. Oh, the team staying there, so every other hotel is going to be sold out. I inflate the price. Oh, I'll, I'll cut Alabama a check. I'll cut this coach a check or this donor a check, uh, this AD a check. Yeah, yeah, I got an emergency twenty for you. I mean, and, and that doesn't even include, you know, the basketball teams that do this, et cetera. No, I mean, it's, just, insane. it's just a cycle of money that goes around to the same people over and over again, and none of it's getting passed to the students, but we're giving them eggs. Yep, you got it. Uh, it, it the article says, by the way, this is in the Toledo Blade. Uh, they were the first to report it. It says, the changes are the first for football, but the latest in the conference is broad efforts to save money in future academic years. On Tuesday, yeah. the MAC announced it would be ending postseason tournaments for eight non-revenue sports beginning with the 2020-2021 school year. Changes, it said, would last for a period of five years. Uh, there will be no MAC tournament for men's or women's soccer, baseball, softball, men's or women's tennis, women's lacrosse, and women's field hockey. Uh, the recipient of the conference's NCAA tournament bid in those eight sports will be determined by the regular season. That I mean, it makes sense, right? That makes sense. Uh, the other side of this is the MAC also cut back on postseason tournaments for other sports, including basketball. The new format for the MAC tournament will be exclusive by featuring the top eight finishers instead of all 12. The league eliminated the first round of the conference basketball tournament, which was played on the campus of the higher seed, and will send all eight corner finalists uh, straight to Cleveland to begin play. The women's volleyball tournament now will feature only four teams instead of eight, other changes include the Swimming and Diving Championships, 
will take place on three days instead of four. Golf championships will be two days instead of three. And the outdoor track and field championships previously held across three days will now join indoor track as a two-day event. Basically, any like they're taking all of these minor things and all of it combined, all the savings combined, will save us are going to two. save. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it'll, it'll save the conference a ton of money. It's going to save the That's schools right. a ton of money. And it, it doesn't look like it's that big of a deal, um, but it's it's a pretty big thing. And and I think that the MAC is the first of many, many conferences that is going yep. to go forward with this because it's just smart. Like, it's yep. just a smart way of going about it. You know, it, I, I've they, these guys have never been, been accused of being smart businessmen, right? Like that's No, I, I've always been very frustrated with the big boy schools. My school is one of them, by the way of just pissing away money just to piss it away, just to show people we've got the newest, shiniest thing. And I get that you can't carry it over and we've got it brought in. Like tell the donors to quit, like save that money. I don't need, listen, I'll tell you the same thing. I told my mama a long time ago. Okay. She's always been, she didn't have a lot. She's never had a lot, but she's always been one to where if she does for one of me or my brother, she does for both of us. And my brother moved into a new house years and years and years ago needed a bunch of updates on the house, didn't have the money to do it, had to borrow money from mama. Mama gave him a couple thousand dollars, called me up and said, hey, went, took out a loan, and I'm going to give you the same money I gave him because I feel like, no, 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 don't keep like that. It, don't, don't worry do that. about it being even. It because I, at that moment in time, I don't need it. And in the same story, I, would, I told her, I would tell all my boosters if I was AD, I can't tell you there won't be a day where I won't knock on your door and say, hey, I need some help. Yeah. But that day ain't today, okay? Yeah. And when I call, know that I have exhausted every other means before calling you. So when I call, take it and take it seriously. And man, what do you think would happen to your to your boosters? Now instead of just handing you money, they'll pay for sponsorships. They'll pay for advertising. They'll they'll do more scrupulous things, more more, more things with more integrity to them. Than, than just handing you a bunch of cash and saying, you know, you know, let me in the locker room with the kids and shake hands and get pictures with them in their underwear. Like nobody that, that cause that's all they get now for being boosters. Yeah. Uh, let's see. This is interesting. Matt said one issue with sports that uh, athletes do multiple events like track and swimming uh, is competing on the same day can affect them. That's well, true. You just got to pick. You just yeah. have to pick one. And that's, that's part of it. Yeah. I mean, it sucks. I mean, I don't, and I don't think that's a knock, by the way. I don't think that's negative. We're allowing you to take place in a sport to where some schools, because of money, is going to lose swimming or they're going to lose track. Yeah. So we're keeping both of them. You can practice at both of them, but on on meet days, if there's a meet on the same day, you got to pick which one you want to do. No one's going to tell you. Yeah. But you, you just don't decide. Have to do both. And if that's the only hindrance you've got. Come on, man. I'm not. We're trying to save your damn sport, period. Yeah. No, you're so you, right. You got to give a little if you're that unique person. No, you're you're 100% right. 100% right. Uh, it's it's crazy. Things are just heating up. It, we, we'll have more football stuff to discuss next week. Today is a short show so that, uh, so that I can get some other things done that have to be done relatively early compared to usual. So we're going to go ahead and wrap this thing up. Uh, Chris, there's nothing breaking, nothing that I've seen, right? You don't see anything? No, hang on. There's a report. Hugh Jackson says the Browns would have rejected the deal for Russell Wilson that we talked about yesterday, no matter what. <laughs> Hugh Jackson is a fool. I hate that man. He's such a fool. He he wasn't even involved with that crap anyway. No, they, like, that was that was conversations above his pay grade. A hundred percent. That's so God, stupid. That guy's such a tool. God bless America. Michael said, have a great weekend, fellas. Gary, I need to get you some of this peanut butter whiskey. Gig them. Uh, Matt said, coach is trying to keep the job, so they need to win. Yeah. Yeah, they need to win. But, you know, if a player he's tells him he's not anything. playing. I think he's, I think he's talking about a – well, I thought he was talking about the, uh, the college athletes. But now I'm wondering – well, Hugh doesn't have a job right now, does he? No, Hugh doesn't have a job. I didn't figure he did. Um, good gracious, good gracious. So that is going to wrap up today's show. Let's I've get out of here. I got some things I got to take care of. We'll uh, we'll talk crap about Hugh Jackson next week. So <laughs> I don't think that'll be too hard to do. 
Anyway, uh, you guys, I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Of course, oh, Matt said it's all about the college athletes. 100%. 100%. Always about the athletes. Um, and it should be. Absolutely should be. You guys have been fantastic. Thank you all for jumping in on the chat. If you would, share the show out with your friends. It's very easy. Just click the share button on whatever platform you're watching on or listening or whatever. Uh, make sure you are subscribed to the podcast, subscribe to the live show, etc. We are going to go ahead and get out of here. Make sure you take care of yourselves, take care of each other. And we're going to see you guys again on Monday. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.